The N.T. Dunphy School, 1 Petticoat Hill Road, Williamsburg, Massachusetts. The original building was constructed in the early 1950s and currently houses grades 3 through 6. The construction of the building consists of brick and block composite exterior walls with a steel frame superstructure. The building has been well maintained over the past 56 plus years, but many of the materials throughout the building have exceeded their typical life expectancy. There was a considerable amount of renovation done during the mid-1980s. This included the addition of wood trusses, new insulation, and a new roof over the double-loaded classroom wing. Also included in this renovation were new non-insulated windows, a front entrance canopy, and minor interior improvements. Over time, many of the original spaces have been converted into specialized teaching spaces, special education, and additional administration areas. The most noteworthy is the renovation of the original locker facilities into special education rooms and an art room. The physical condition of both spaces is less than desirable and should be addressed. Other minor renovations and alterations to the original building including a newer toilet facility adjacent to the main lobby and a chairlift at the existing stage. The core facilities of the building include the kitchen, cafeteria, stage, and gymnasium. All of these areas are used daily by both the community and the school department. The physical condition of the core facilities needs improvement, not only for physical condition of materials, but for properly rated areas of assembly. Many of the original storage areas associated with the core facilities have been converted into other uses, office, special education, conference rooms. Overall, the building is in fair condition but in need of substantial upgrades throughout the facility in order to meet current codes, improve safety, and alleviate the inadequacies of space that currently exist. One of the most significant needs is the original Fitzgibbons boiler, built in 1952. With its Nesbet air handling units also originating from 1952, the system is in dire need of repair. The first thing that would need to be addressed and able to move forward with the boiler is the asbestos related to the boiler. The entire boiler itself is encased in asbestos of the friable type. Friable asbestos is a term that describes any asbestos containing material that when dry can easily crumble or pulverize to a powder by hand. Material that contains just 1% asbestos and is friable is considered to be regulated. This would apply to the pipes and the boiler in the boiler room. Also, all of the extensive piping underneath the 20,000 square foot crawl space. All this friable asbestos is properly encapsulated at the moment. However, any HVAC updates would require appropriate asbestos abatement. In addition, non-friable asbestos containing materials contains a binder or hardening agent like cement or asphalt or vinyl and only becomes an issue when the material breaks down. This would apply to the majority of the vinyl flooring and countertops throughout the building. It becomes an issue only if it's removed or when it breaks down. Lead in the water. In the late spring of 2005, lead levels in the school had risen above DEP recommended levels for safe drinking water, as indicated in the Severin Trent testing. Over the summer of 2005, a limited scope plumbing effort was undertaken to provide lead-free drinking water. A single new water line was installed to feed water to the kitchen, the health office, and two drinking fountains. However, in the process, all other drinking fountains were removed from classroom sinks, and the sinks that exist in the rest of the building are only used for hand washing and washing of materials in the classrooms. The electrical system, much of it originating from 1952, has severe limits regarding its capacity. In many instances, we're still using adapters to plug in much of our equipment. You'll find extension cords and more to make things work. Original electric ovens limit the capacity of the building to be powered by a backup generator. Many of the original circuit boards, circuit breaker boxes that are located within the school cannot be replaced without replacing the entire system. We're fortunate to have a very thoughtful electrical contractor who takes parts from old buildings and saves them to be reinstalled in the Dunphy School when we do have a breakdown so that we don't have to replace everything all at once. But this has to be changed at some point. The exterior of the school, most notable, are the number of windows associated with the school. The great news about that is there's a tremendous amount of natural light that's brought into the school. However, the downside is that the windows that were installed in 1986 were single pane, non-insulated glass windows. We do have storms, but you can imagine what it's like to put storms on all of these windows and have them work effectively. Of note also is the masonry. The exterior masonry of the school is in need of repointing in numerous places. The repointing is to preserve much of the building. The roof. The peak roof was installed in 1986 over much of the original building. 
the 25-year asphalt shingles will meet their lifespan in 2011. A number of the shingles have already begun to deteriorate. It was also discovered in 2002 through an engineering study conducted by the firm of Edwards and Kelsey that the 1986 roof structure had deficiencies that would limit the capacity of the roof to accept an additional layer of shingles. Therefore, a full removal and replacement will be necessary. The gymnasium, a community facility, 1952 construction, outstanding size gymnasium for the time and year it was built. Superstructure is in fine shape. If we look up at the ceiling, we can see that we've done some repairs and patches that have helped to maintain our roof and ceiling so that we have appropriate lighting for the functions that are here. However, to do so, we have created a patchwork. In addition, you'll note that there's a number of spots where there's old water damage, and we're hopeful that we don't have new water damage in the future, but we're looking forward to repairing what's existing there so that we can start afresh. On the stage, you'll find that we use the space for numerous other activities, including occupational therapy, physical therapy. The PE teacher uses it as an office space. The speech-language pathologist will use it as a space for working with children as well. The space is not adequate. We're working next to electrical panels. We're working in the dark. You'll note at the entrance to the gymnasium that goes out to the parking lot. We've been unable to use that entryway effectively through the winter due to structural issues with that space. There are 10 sets of exterior doors. The doors were updated in 1986 to some extent with new hardware. The exterior doors are no longer operable in certain areas. The exterior doors have spaces that we've attempted to close with weather stripping and moldings to close out the air from coming in with some limited success but given the high volume of use for those doors that kind of weather stripping and moldings that we're accustomed to at home don't hold up. They don't work but we've done our best to try to close some of those gaps. The Anti-Dunphy School, 1 Petticoat Hill Road, Williamsburg, Massachusetts.